What does it mean? Differentiability. Okay, the definition, and we're interested in our first two points here. If a function is discontinuous at x equals a, then it is not differentiable at this point. Okay, so for a function to be differentiable, it must be continuous. That's our first thing. For a continuous function to be differentiable at x equals a, then the derivative at this particular point has got to match up from the negative side and the positive side. So you can kind of this, uh, think of this as the, the curve has got to be smooth along the entirety of it. And our third part is if a function is differentiable at x equals a, then the derivative exists. Okay, we're going to be mainly focusing on the first two points of this definition here. So first things first, here I've just got a hybrid function. I've got a quadratic in red and a cubic in green. Okay. Now we can see here that this function is discontinuous, okay, because there is a gap at this point, x equals two. So at the point x equals two, I would say that it is not continuous, okay, it's not continuous, and therefore it is not differentiable at this particular point. We could make this, or we could investigate to see if this is differentiable, if we made it continuous. Okay, so if we consider this function with its vertical shift down, uh, we've got a new function, okay, instead of having plus three at the end of it, we've just got a plus one. Second part of the definition says the derivative at this point of x equals a, in this case, I'm interested in the point two, the derivative is equal to each other from both ends. Okay, you can kind of think of this as the slope matches. If you take it from both sides, the slope is going to match up. And really that should tell us that we've got a, a curve that is nice and smooth and continuous. If we want to precisely see if the function is differentiable at the point, what we really need to do is we need to take an analysis of the derivatives graphs. Okay, so here I've got the red and the a green function there, and I've just taken the derivative, I've applied the chain rule, you can do that as a little, you can pause and see if you get the same answer, okay, but that's what you get. And once we graph these derivatives, what you'll see is that the, the graphs of the derivatives is continuous. And the graphs of the derivative tell me what the gradient is for the function. So this graph here tells me the m values or the gradient values of the curve that I was looking at. And if that's continuous, then that tells me that the gradient was nice and smooth along the entirety of it. Okay. We're going to have a look at a non-example, okay, um, or a case where we would not have differentiability at a point. Okay, let's say I've got sine uh, with those parameters and a negative sine of these parameters here, and I'm interested at the point of four pi on three. We can, what we can see here is that uh, we've kind of got like a corner, okay, and so immediately you can see well, it's probably not going to be differentiable because. You can kind of think of this as I'm skating along this curve and when I get to that point on a four pi on three, I'm probably gonna stack it, okay? Because it's not a smooth curve. You can visualize this with the derivatives or the slopes from both sides, uh, they're not gonna be equal, okay? You kind of, well, you, you're pretty much, you're stuck at a corner there, okay? So you would say that the curve at this point here, We've got the function here is not differentiable at four pi on three. Let's have a look at an example. Okay, we'll work through one. Okay, so here we've got our learning goal. We want to understand that differentiability, this new thing we're looking at, implies that a function is smooth and continuous along the entire curve and that, let me erase that, and that the derivatives at the particular point match up from either side. So you're going to have a nice smooth curve. That's our learning goal. And so here we've got determine if this function f of x is differentiable at the point being x equal to two, okay? And then the second part says sketch the derivatives and interpret as to why this reinforces our solution. So we're gonna have a solution and we're gonna graph the derivatives to explain why. So first things first, let's have a go at graphing this. We're gonna have a g of x here, that is a quadratic. And we have got h of x, which is linear. And so you can kind of visualize this as, okay, we've got a quadratic and I know what this quadratic kind of looks like, okay, but I'm only interested between negative one and two. And then I've got a linear function. I kind of know what a linear function looks like, but I'm only interested in what it looks like between two and five. So let's go ahead and try and sketch these here. So we're gonna have g of x being equal to this quadratic between the, well, in this domain. So I've got negative one, 
to x, including it, but not including 2. What we're really going to have here is, well, I can factorize this. And that's going to tell me the roots of my quadratic. I know that. What I'm also going to have to have a look at is where does this function start and where does it end? So I can kind of just uh, draw the points up. So I'm going to check endpoints. So I'm going to have g of negative 1. Okay, and that negative 1 came from my domain. So I'm just going to have a look at, well, when x is negative 1, what is y? Where's it going to sit on the plane? And so I'm going to just plug it into my factorized form. So I've got my uh, two points there. Those are my two endpoints. You can kind of think of them as boundary points, if you like. And I'm just going to plot those onto my uh, piece of graph paper here. So I've got the point negative 6, 1. And I've also got the point 2, 0. Uh, and that is an open circle because we are not including that point. Okay, that is a, that's because of this bracket here. Okay, not inclusive. And I know that I'm going to have uh, roots at one and one and two. So my, and I know, I also know from uh, the form it was given to me that the y-intercept is two. So this is kind of what our quadratic is looking like here. Okay, it's going to uh, look something like that. So that is my quadratic part. Now I'm going to check my linear guy here. So I'm going to have my h of x equals x minus 2. Now I know that this is just a linear function with a gradient of 1. So I'm just going to check my endpoints here. And this is stuck between 2, including it, and not including 5. So if I've got the point of 2... 2 minus 2 is equal to 0, therefore I've got the point 2, 0. Now notice here that this function, this hybrid function, is continuous. So it is continuous, great, it could be differentiable. I've got to do a, another part of the check though. Okay, and I'm just going to then have a look at where's this function going to end up. And so this function is going to start here, close circle, and end up here, open circle. Okay, so we can see here that the function is continuous. Is it differentiable? Uh, let's have a look. I need to check that it is continuous. Okay, now I just need to check, do the derivatives match up? So in other words, what is the derivative of the point here and then what is the derivative of the point there okay so just either side at this point of x being equal to 2 what's the slope here what's the slope here if they're going to be equal then what we have got is a differentiable function at the point of x being equal to 2 so what i'm going to have to do here is i'm going to have to take some derivatives so i'm going to have g of x i'm going to take that derivative so i'm going to have g prime of x that's so going to be equal to just using the power rule, 2x minus 3. And I'm going to have h of x. And I'm going to take its derivative. And I'm just going to have 1. And then I need to have a check here. At the point of x being equal to 2, do the derivatives match up? And so I'm going to have g prime of 2 being equal to 2 outside of 2 minus 3, which is going to give me 4 minus 3, which equals 1. And so you could say that, therefore, m equals 1 at x equals 2 for, for g of x. And then you could also have h prime of 2, which is equal to, well, it's just going to be 1 because we've got no x values to put in there. Therefore, m equals 1 at x equals 2 and that is really what we should expect because the derivative of a, a linear function is going to give us whatever the gradient is of the linear function so we've got the gradient is 1 okay and what we can also do here just to finish off uh, this question here is we're just going to graph the derivatives so if I've got g prime of x that's this guy here and we need to graph it within the same domain so that was from negative 1 to x up to 2 and then I'm also going to have just h prime of x equals 1 between 2, including n up to 5. 
So I'm, I'm going to do my uh, blue guy here first. That's a linear function, 2x minus 3 uh, between these bounds here. So I'm going to have, it's going to have a y intercept down there. And for every uh, one I go along, I go two up. One I go along, I go two up. And then I've got my h prime of x that is just equal to one along those points here, including that point there. Okay, along to there, open circle. And so you can see, well, the, uh, the graphs of the derivatives is continuous, therefore um, the function is a differentiable at any point.